Yes, apparently 1984 is happening because your television that you're watching this on right now is watching you, or more accurately, listening to you. Uh, the story doing the rounds this week that Samsung TV, new internet-connected Samsung TVs, are recording your voice and sending it on to a third party, which is exactly the sort of story that sent everyone into a crazy tailspin about privacy and security, but there are a few details that perhaps were not as reported as well as they should be. To clarify, we have here from The Guardian Australia, Claire Porter and Luke Hopewell from uh, Gizmodo Australia. Luke, walk me through exactly the reality of this situation. Look, this is a standard bit of technology caught up in a very badly worded privacy statement. There are reasons to be concerned. So, for example, if you say to your TV, TV, play ABC News 24 or jump to Radio National. And then after that phrase include, also, here's my date of birth, pin number and address. <laughs> that will be transmitted to that third party provider, which is Nuance, uh, and actually uh, stored and decrypted. Because the actual TV doesn't know what to do with your date of birth or your address, it's just going to say you're an idiot. Try again. <laughs> you know, it, they just have to say that it's being transmit. You know, there are a lot bigger things that we can worry about than just how Samsung's badly worded a privacy statement. They're also not the only manufacturer that have this sort of technology. I think LG do it as well, Claire. Certainly not. I think any company that has some kind of voice activation service within their hardware or software, you'll find similar terms of service. They just won't do such a horrible job of effing it up quite so publicly. <laughs> I think it's worth noting, though, that while it may have been misreported and somewhat misconstrued, it could be seen as an opportunity for greedy law enforcement departments, for example, to potentially now identify this third party company and see if they can do some kind of data sharing deal. So I do think that it, it does have the potential to be the elephant in the room. So maybe if you need to have some private conversations, it's best to step into the bedroom. It's the same reason why we shouldn't be worried about hackers getting into our TVs, for example. There's no honeypot there. There's no huge amount of information that they need to know about to actually uh, get at that metadata or get at that data that's being sent. Because for the most part, it's just going to be people giving instructions to their TV. It's going to be change the channel or turn off or turn the volume up. If you really want to go for grabbing metadata and, and grabbing hacking information, you should still go for the usual carriage services that people actually use, like their smartphones and, and skimming ATMs and things like that. I mean, that's a fair point, but at the same time, anywhere that's going to be storing some of your account information, whether that's your Xbox, which might have your credit card information and maybe your social media logins, the same could go for any smart TV. That information has to be stored somewhere. Usually it's going to be a third party. That third party has now been identified. So your television is a sitting duck, but Nuance certainly is. So it's not about whether a hacker attacks your TV, it's whether the companies that have been employed to store and supposedly protect our data are secure enough that we can trust them with our information. Is there a security risk in your mind as, as, as a user? I mean, again, we're not talking necessarily about people sitting there in front of their TV reading out their, their social security number. But where would the fault lines be for you, Luke? Look, the, the problem here is is you, it's a good point you brought up data retention because that is something we should be genuinely worried about. Uh, the thing with this is that Telstra uh, and, and a lot of other ISPs like Ionet have expressed concerns over quote-unquote honeypots of data, sitting at rest in data centres, going for, you know, being bid on by government contractors who will always go for the lowest bid, which means the lowest security. What you need to worry about there is something that did actually happen happened back in 2013, I think it was, where hackers hacking under the, the banner of Anonymous actually exposed all these previous records from a Australian New Zealand telco saying, look at the data that we can get at rest. You're not even doing mandatory data retention just yet. Do you still want to keep going with this now that you know how easy it is for us to hack it? That's where the problem lies is, is who's storing this data and, and where it's being stored, not so much, uh, you know, your TV quote unquote spying on you. I think people should be more concerned about the information they're sending out across all of their devices. I think people tend to forget that antivirus is not just for computers. It's not just for TVs either. Most of our interactions seem to be taking place on mobile phones now as opposed to computers. And yet so few Australians and, and people across the world have installed antivirus or any other kind of data protection software on their phones or on their modems or routers. I mean, if you want your information to be safe, at least within the confines of your own homes, you're best setting up security at the point at which your internet leaves and enters your home before it reaches your device. And I don't think a lot of people are doing that. 
I'm one of these people who does feel okay trading a sufficient amount of privacy away for uh, an equal amount of convenience. So for example, I'm happy for Google to, to have a machine look at my email so that when I say, when's my next flight to my phone, it can actually bring that up in a, in a relevant information and give that to me quickly. That's privacy that I've traded away for a machine reading my emails, but it's convenience that I'm getting back in hand. It's something that I'm okay with. Again, you should always have a look at what you're trading away before you just blindly hit accept, because if you don't, you're in for a nightmare trying to get your, your data back. It's like your virginity. You can never get it back once it's gone. Yes, there is tons more on both this story and a bunch of other stories in the world of technology this week. Uh, Ross Ulbricht, the guy that created the Silk Road, was finally convicted. And we're talking to a 23-year-old that makes $10 million a year. It's ridiculous. Uh, you can find out who that is on the Download This Show podcast this week. It is live now on the RN website or on iTunes or on Stitcher or on Pocket Cast or on any of the other things that let you listen to podcasts. Uh, I am contractually obliged to tell you to subscribe to the RN YouTube channel. There will be a button somewhere on this screen. Roy assures me every week it's there, but he never tells me where to point. So I'm just going to say it's there. There, just, just click there. Good. Thanks, guys.